Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, a warm welcome to each and every one on this beautiful, beautiful uh, summer morning. If you're watching on TV, welcome. You are part of us today, and uh, we are part of you. So together, let us worship the Lord. Let us stand and let us come into His presence with song and with adoration. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. Oh, ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Praise Him in glad With all that is in us, every moment of every day, our hearts cry out praise to the Lord. Thank you for the moments to gather, hearts together and voices together and lives together this morning to celebrate your presence, God, and to open our spirits to your anointing, to your energy, to your wisdom, to your word. Give us hearts, voices, and lives that reflect your glory, that celebrate your presence. Be honored and blessed by all that happens in this place is our prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome today to worship. Would you join me in the call to worship? Friends, when the world divides us, us when the world calls us orphaned, when the world causes hardship, and affliction. Come, Holy Spirit, keep us faithful. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill this place. Let's sing together. Come, we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Now, before we come together to pray as one, let us just pause for a moment silently. May you reflect, perhaps in uh, meditation of, uh, of repentance, just allow God to enter your spirit with His Spirit. And now let us pray together in one voice. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you today, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, and ears to listen for your word. As you speak to us, give us hearts to love you more, and to grow in deeper relationship with one another. May our worship today 
Enliven us to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name. You know, there's a lot I like about coming to church, but one of the most important things is in a chaotic and crazy world where a lot of things seem to be going in a whole bunch of different directions, when we come together, we can remind each other of who we are, we can remind each other of what's really true in life, and we can keep ourselves grounded there in the reality of a God that loves us and works with us and walks with us no matter what. Hallelujah. Join with me as we greet one another, celebrating the fact that we can be together today. Reach out and maybe find a stranger, make a new friend in the name of Christ our Lord. As you're finding your seats, Barb is here with the wonderful zebra bag, which means she has something special to share. So kids, come on down. I know that we've got some special things to share today. Come on down, guys. Barb is here. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Glad you're here today. Hi, girls. Nice to see you. Come on down. No school's out, but I think we're going to kind of have a little science lesson, all right? Oh, not so good, huh? <laughs> well, I, wanted, I brought some things out of my husband's basement that I wanted to show you. And I call it my husband's basement because he has three quarters of it for his stuff. So that's why it's his basement, not mine. Well, that's not my bag. Um, too much stuff in. Here's my bag. Do you know about magnets? Do you know how magnets work? Do you know how about magnets work? Well, I brought some, some nails and some screws. And some are from brass. You know, there's different kinds of metals. There's brass and there's little funny ones. And some stick to magnets and some don't. And I got to thinking this week about how important it is for us to follow Jesus. And I thought, well, how, how do we stick to him? How do we stay stuck to Jesus? And I got to thinking, it's kind of like a magnet. I want you to see this, okay? Now, this is a brass screw. There's three of them in here, I think. And they're different because you can't pick them up with a magnet. See? They just stay on the plate. Nothing happens. Well, that little bugger wanted picked up, didn't it? But the brass ones don't do anything. And that's why you use brass oftentimes like in doors and things where they're going to get wet because they don't rust. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool because if we, stay, if we stay strong in Jesus, we don't rust either. We stay strong. Well, then Dawn brought me up this little thing, a little hook-like thing. See it? No, it looks like brass. It's the same color. But look, it, oh, it sucked right up onto that magnet. So it's not brass, is it? No. And 
he brought me up this thing, this little clip-like thing. And it kind of looks brass, so let's see if it hooks up. Whoa, I think it's going. Oh, sucked right up there, didn't it? Well, I'm thinking, whoa, that's pretty important how we get sucked into doing things that maybe we don't want to do. So he brought me up this rusty, ugly nail. Now, that's really ugly, isn't it? Now, do you think if it's us rusty and ugly like that, that it could get sucked into things? What do you think? Well, watch this. This is so cool. I'm going to put the magnet underneath the plate. Now, watch. It's moving with the magnet. Can you see? I have the magnet, and it's moving. Look at that. Hi, come on down. We're talking about magnets and getting sucked into things. And I got to thinking, now this thing, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't do anything. Nothing. But all these other ones just suck right up on there like that. And I got to thinking about, you know, if we don't listen to Jesus... And we don't listen to our parents, what they're telling us. Because really, your parents are pretty smart. They know. They've been there. They've done things. They're really pretty smart. If we don't listen to them and become like a brass screw and listen to our own minds and what we're taught, we could become like these crazy nails and screws that my husband brought me up. We could get sucked into things we don't want to do. Because we listen to other people other than Jesus. And I thought, boy, that's pretty tough if we do that. So you need to listen to your parents and listen to what Jesus says. And then when you're among a bunch of people, your kids at the playground or at school or wherever you are, you need to think now, if you have time, you need to think. Would Jesus want me to do that, or does he want me to follow along just like this old rusty nail? Does he want me to follow all these other people? Look, it's coming clear across the plate. Does he want me to just get sucked in like this and do things that I wouldn't normally do, hang on to things I don't need? Or what should I do? And, you know, it takes a lot of strength to be like the brass that doesn't get sucked into things. It takes a lot of strength to do that in your heart and in your mind. But if we love Jesus deep, deep in our hearts, we'll have the strength, okay? So as you're out playing and doing things, use your own minds. Don't get sucked into a bunch of things you don't want to do, okay? And just say to people, I'm not going to do that because I promised Jesus I wouldn't do those things. That's all you have to say. And they'll, they'll go away. And just stick to that. I'm not going to get sucked in to what the world or people want me to do like that. I am going to be like the brass, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to be genuine, and I'm going to love Jesus and listen to my parents. Okay? Think you can do that? I think you can, too. And it's important for all of us to remember that if we love Jesus deep, deep in our hearts. We're not going to become... Look at they all get sucked on there except the brass ones. They're all up oh, there's one. I think I can get it. I think I can get it. Somebody's saying, I think I can oh, look at that. Will it suck on there? <gasps> oh, everything is sucked on there but the brass ones. We don't want to be like this, following other people. We want to be like the brass ones and follow Jesus, okay? Can you pray with me? Jesus, we just thank you that you're there for us to follow, that you're there to keep us on the right track. You're there to teach us to love and love genuinely, to love always, and to love all those around us. Thank you today for these beautiful children. And I hope that they will remember to not be like this magnet and suck up into everything, but to be like a brass screw and think about what you want them to do first in life. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming down here. Okay, you can go back to your mom and dad, all right? Take your time. There's no rush. Can you find them back there, sweetie? Thank you, Barb. Okay. Thank you. We want to begin our ministry moment time with a couple words of thanks. Uh, you've heard us share about the wonderful experience Vacation Bible School was this year, and indeed it was. But uh, a word of uh, thanks specifically from the mission committee, because one of the activities of Bible School was, uh, was a mission project to support Operation Christmas Child. And you'll see information in your bulletin, but a total of 65 boxes were uh, brought together by the children in Vacation Bible School 
and uh, 122 items brought in for boxes, and uh, $914 was gathered um, in donations that week to support Operation Christmas Child. So, again, a thanks to everybody, and this thanks comes from the mission committee, mm -hmm. and also a reminder that the, um, the whole church uh, uh, mission towards Operation Christmas Child, the shoe boxes, that will begin in October, so stay tuned. Also, a thanks um, regarding the uh, ABC uh, uh, Life Center. We're thankful for all the baby bottles that were brought in. About a month ago, they were brought in, and um, as of this past week, uh, a total of $2,646.76 was gathered through those little baby bottles. Isn't that's, that that's great? That's pretty cool. You give the Lord yeah, a hand for that. Amen. Over $2,500. And also, if uh, there's still a few bottles outstanding, if, uh, if you would have a bottle that you haven't brought in yet, you can still bring that in, and it will, get, uh, it will get sent to the right place. So again, thank you. Also, take a look at the blue insert, please. The blue insert in the bulletin for, uh, for, for everybody. This is a very important announcement. And uh, it's just a continual reminder of the need in our children's ministry, facing many needs always, but particularly this fall as we enter the, a new season of life together here. So please take note of all the things that uh, uh, can be uh, uh, ministries, whether it be the nursery or, or teaching or helping, helping in the toddler room. Uh, so please uh, take a look at that and uh, let us know if you or somebody in your family can participate in uh, that vital ministry, our children. Thank you. Indeed. A couple more things real quick. Take a look at the schedule for the week, if you would. The church council, those of you that are part of the church council, please remember that we'll be meeting for our quarterly meeting this coming Tuesday evening uh, at 6.30. Please uh, take note of that. If those of you that are part of uh, the council, please be sure to check Dropbox to, to review reports and agenda and things like that. Uh, also, um, please notice the information about the Commission to Proclaim ministry that will be uh, uh, starting again in in August, and that those details are on the back of your bulletin. And let me call your attention to a brand new um, uh, study that's actually starting uh, in a couple of weeks. Pastor Jeff Little from First Church is going to be leading uh, a six-week study uh, uh, in the mornings at First Church and in the evenings here at Christ Church on uh, our Bishop Bickerton's new book called What Are We Fighting For? So if you would like to participate in that in any way, uh, the announcement and the sign-up time will be on the Because You Count sheet now next week. But if you'd like to do that this week, you can just write on the top of your Because You Count sheet, participate in, in, in the bishop's study or something like that, and we'll make sure that you get registered uh, for that study that will start on the 28th of July, the 28th of July. Sue Kolejewski, uh, one of the missionaries that we support, uh, she would be with us on August 7th for a, uh, you know, she'll speak to us briefly that morning. Uh, we have been running uh, an announcement there about a need for housing. Just wanted to let you know that that need has been taken care of. We're thankful for a family to step forward and said, we will house Sue while she is here. Uh, also, uh, the Because You Count form, take a look at that, please. You'll see a number of items, uh, important items, if you can help, if you'd like to participate in one or more of those. Please let us know by uh, checking off uh, one of the spots. But for everybody, please fill out the top Drop that in the offering plate a little bit later. The yellow insert, by far the most important insert in the bulletin. The yellow insert, pl please take note of all the uh, ongoing uh, needs and the, uh, the more recent requests that have come to our attention and the praises. Keep that before you this week. Also, uh, a few updates. Uh, Stacy Novak uh, spent a couple days in the hospital. She's home, but we are uh, continuing to pray for Stacy Novak. Also, we're remembering in prayer this week a couple people that will be having surgery, that being uh, Sharon Chandler and also Lois Cross. So let's be lifting them up throughout this week as they prepare and as they undergo their surgeries. And so, as we prepare to hear the Word of God, friends, I'm going to invite you now to stand. Let's sing one of the great hymns of the church. Sing it with gusto like Methodists should. You know, Wesley said that when you sing, sing enthusiastically. And this is a good hymn to sing enthusiastically. So, let's sing and prepare to hear the Word.
Hear the ladies on this verse. Now, guys, you sing this alone. Is Everyone join now. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the face shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back at the scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. You can echo. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. And everyone said. Amen. You may remain standing as Dick Way comes to share with us from the uh, scripture lesson today. Good morning, Dick. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Today's reading is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 21. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. For be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thanks, Dick. Sam reminded me that what Wes, the word that Wesley actually used was not enthusiastically. He used lustily. Sing lustily. So I can say that that was some lustful singing. Thank you for that. Let's pray together. Gracious one, we, we give you thanks for the moments to sing and to praise and to celebrate being together as your people, knowing that you are here in our midst. Oh God, it's, these are challenging days that we live in. We need your grace and your strength, and we need the truth of your word to keep us grounded and focused in following you. So by your spirit now, take your word and imperfect human words. Use them as the vessel of your truth to each of our lives this day. This is our prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. So, between now and the end of September, I have the distinct privilege of officiating at four weddings and one renewal of vows. For the wedding piece, I usually take couples through three to four sessions of premarital counseling before the wedding occurs. So I've been working with some of these couples that are planning to get married in September, and one of them I met with this week, and the couple was telling me about their weekend routine. Both of them have full-time jobs, work straight up until 5 o'clock, if not a little after that, on Fridays. And then recently, when they get to that spot on Friday afternoons, they've been taking off their professional hats and putting on the hat of getting ready for a wedding. Now, you all know, if you've been in that particular place, that that's a lot of work. A lot of times it starts well before the wedding itself, but when you get into those last few weeks, the pace can start to get pretty fast, pretty quick. In the case of this particular couple, they are working hard at getting his place ready for the wedding and for her to move in, and in her case, getting her place ready to sell. So they describe their weekend this way. They, they come to where his place is and they begin to work at, su- at about evening on Fridays and they work straight through Saturday and straight through Sunday until almost dusk on Sunday evening. And then they have this ritual. They build a fire in the backyard and they gather the chairs alongside the fire and they talk about the weekend and they talk about their future together. Now, the gal in this particular relationship said this to me this week. When we do that, when we get to the fire pit, we are both exhausted. But it's a good tired. Have you ever been there? A a good tired? You might be weary, but you're weary because something amazing has happened in your life. You've, been, you've worked hard, you've pushed yourself, and now at the end of whatever it is that you've been working on, you've achieved something remarkable. You're tired, but it's a good tired. Do you know the word weary means physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, or strain? We all probably have been weary because of physical exertion or mental ex- exertion. And my hope is that at some point in time in our life, we've been at a place where weariness is because we're good, tired. But you know, there's another definition of weary. I don't know whether you know this or not. Weary can also be defined as characterized by or causing impatience 
or dissatisfaction, tedious, irksome. Now this kind of weariness comes from a different place. It comes from having given yourself all that you have, your energy, your breath, your resources, you've given it to things like trying to maintain or change a system. Maybe trying to advance a cause. Maybe trying to fix a problem. Maybe trying to hold together a relationship. This, this type of weariness looks a little different, doesn't it? This type of weariness comes from having given yourself so completely to try to get something to happen and only to be met with things like opposition and meanness and conflict and just downright uncooperative folk. Now let me ask you, have you ever been there? Have you ever been weary like this? Well, let me ask another question. When you're in that place, what do you do? When you're this kind of weary, what do you do? Do you, do you sound off? Do you get angry? Do you maybe send the right little tweet out to people? Do you rant on Facebook? Do you, do you quit? Do you just give up and say it's just not worth it anymore? In the section of Scripture that I want us to circle this morning, we get the sense that in the church in Rome, there were some folks that were that kind of weary. Weary from trying hard to do good. Now, it's important for me to keep us grounded in the context of Paul's writing to Rome, especially this segment of it. So I'm going to remind you that the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians in Rome are trying desperately to figure out how to live together again after they've been separated for about five years. Claudius kicked the Jews out in 49. When he dies in 54, they are allowed to come back home. And when they come back home, they find what had started as a Jewish church to be a completely Gentile church now. And they've got to figure out how to integrate, how to work together again. When there are two different ways of seeing the world in many ways, the, the, the church in Rome has got to figure out how to come together again as one. Now, my guess is that at some point in time in most of our lives, there has been a moment when we have tried hard to, to find common ground with someone or something that sees things differently than we do. Can I get a witness? Has there been a moment in your life when you've tried to find some common ground with someone or something that sees it drastically different even than maybe what you do? Well, it's interesting to me that Paul says something very specific to the church in Rome who are exactly in that place, trying to find common ground between two different ways of seeing the world. Notice what he says. Read this with me. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Read it again. Joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. See, Paul knew that there was a key to making relationships work when there are differences of opinion. And though he doesn't really use the word in this spot, he uses it several different places in, in Romans and other places. It's the word persevere. Look at those phrases. Do they not shout perseverance to you? Joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in in prayer. Do you know what the word persevere means? A steady persistence in a course of action. To persevere means to, to give yourself steadily to a particular course of action. Paul says to the church in Rome, look, 
Never allow your hope to be overcome by cynicism. Stay hopeful. And not just hopeful, but joyfully hopeful. Stay patient when the times get hard. And above all, stay faithful in prayer. The word faithful means to persist in a course of action, to to persist even. It's almost the exact same definition of perseverance itself, To, to, to persist in a steady way of doing things. Stay faithful in prayer. Why? Because Paul knew that the source of being able to be hopeful and joyful and patient is the connection to God in prayer. It's prayer that we, it's in prayer that we find hope, that we find joy, that we find strength, that we find focus, that we find perspective. Paul says to you, Paul says to me, Paul says to the church in Rome, Persistence, perseverance is a key to making relationships work. I want you to take this with you. Relationships work because participants stay at it. You ask anybody who have been married more than six months... You ask anybody that have been married, especially the ones 50 years and plus, when you ask them, how did you do that? Their answer almost always includes something like, we didn't give up. We stayed at it. Relationships that work are ones where the participants don't give up or give in without leaving it all on the field. Relationships that work are places where the participants are willing and, 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 and intentionally choose to be hopeful, to be patient, and to pray. They are, they are places where they persevere. Relationships that work are relationships that are focused on persevering. Take a look at this picture. What do you see? You see, uh, what a headache. Barry Stover, the tree guy, says, I see a headache. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, I'd like to see you take that one down, brother. Uh huh. That's an interesting tree, isn't it? You see which way it's growing? Huh? Yeah? Out? And, and, and how are the rest of them growing? Up? Hmm. Here's a little closer look. This is a pic- couple pictures we took in Quebec. When I saw this picture, I thought, you know, I'm going to preach a sermon about that someday. And the sermon that I'm going to preach about that is going to focus on this. When everybody else is wanting to go this way, go that way. And and that's a good sermon, by the way. And, And that'll preach someday. But as I looked at these pictures this week, it occurred to me, man, if that tree is not an illustration of perseverance, I don't know what is. Are you with me? I I will grow, this tree says. I, even if I have to grow out over the water and in completely different direction from the rest of the trees, I will survive. This tree is a persevering tree. Relationships that work say, I will survive. I will grow. I will give my all to life even if it means I've got to grow completely different from the rest of the folk, even if it means I've got to lay it all on the line, I will grow. Here's another picture. What do you see here? What do you see? Okay, this is the interactive stuff now. What do you see? You see a dead tree. Now, if you look real closely, what you see is that the base of that dead snag is not touching the water, nor is it touching the ground. You catch that? It may not be as easy to see, but there is space between the water and the bottom of that dead snag. You know what this is? It's the top of a tree that died. And the wind took it and blew it down, but when it fell, look how it fell. How did it fall? 
straight up. As if to say, even in death, I will fight to stand tall. Perseverance. I will survive. I will grow. I will grasp for life. Even with my dying breath. Paul says to the church in Rome and to the church in Franklin, relationships that work exhibit that kind of perseverance. A focus, a dogged devotion that refuse to give up or refuse to give in. Now, I'll be the first to tell you what you already know. That kind of perseverance is not easy. Are you with me? That kind of perseverance, quite frankly, is hard. Do you know why? Because sometimes our weariness gets the best of us. Sometimes the weariness of the picture of the gal beside the wall gets the best of us, and we give up, we quit on relationships too soon because we get weary. Now listen to me, sisters and brothers. I will be the first to say to you that not every relationship is salvageable. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about marriages or whether we're talking about friendships or whether we're talking about family dynamics or whether we're talking about opposing viewpoints between groups of people. Not every relationship is salvageable. In fact, here's the truth, and some of you know this, some relationships are just downright toxic. And the only way to survive is to distance yourself from that person or that situation. That's the only way that you're going to survive. I want to be clear about that. But I also want to be clear about this. I think that sometimes the relationships that we're in, we give up on too quickly. And the reason we give up on them too quickly is because we are relying on a source of energy and a source of strength that is the wrong source of strength. How many of you know that the source to persevere in relationships is not within you? You get that, right? It's not in you. How many of you, when you're weary and tired and beaten up and battered, can look yourself in the mirror and say, I will be persevering today? Oh, you can say that all you want, but you're going to walk away still tired and still weary. Why? Because we think that by doing the things that we do, by our own humanness, by our human strategies, by our human books, by our human techniques, we can persevere through hard relationships and through struggling times. That's why the verse we read from Romans 12, 12, has to be coupled with Romans 12, 11. Read 12 with me again. Ready? Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. That's 12. Now here's 11. Read it with me. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Do you get it? Do you see verse 12? This flows from that. The ability to be joyfully hopeful, to be patient in the midst of affliction, to be faithful in prayer, the ability to do that flows from a a life that is on fire, a connection to God that is on fire. That's the only place that it's going to come from. It's interesting that the word fervor here in Greek is ziontes. It's from the word zeo, and look at what it means. To boil or to, or to be hot. So when Paul says, never let, never lack in zeal, keep your spiritual fervor, what he's saying is you've got to keep your connection to God on fire. 
The only way to be joyful in hope and patient in times of affliction and faithful in prayer is by giving focused attention to your connection to God because that's the resource you need to persevere in the relationships of life. Keep boiling in your relationship with the Lord. That's the place that's going to fuel joyful in hope, faithful in affliction, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. So think about this with me. What does it, what does it mean to, to keep your connection to God aflame, boiling? What, what does that look like? Well, I, I thought about that a little bit, and, and I came to this. What do you see? Go ahead. Say it a little louder. Omelet. Omelet. Maybe. Any other ideas? Blueberry pancake. (laughs) Um, Katie Aaron sitting in the back. We'll need breakfast when we're done. Okay, just so you know. Okay. Actually, this this is a pot of mushroom soup. Now, do you see that it looks like it's bubbling just a little bit? What does it take to keep it bubbling? Okay, heat. That's one, okay? It needs a power source, right? It needs something to keep it warm. But what's going to happen to this soup if something else doesn't happen? You have to what? Huh, why? Because it'll burn, and if it burns, it's... Eh. That's a good theological word, by the way. Eh. Are you you tracking with me? In order to keep this this boiling and bubbling and cooking and and tasteful, (coughs) it has to be stirred. In other words, it has to be tended. Does it not? If you just put that on and walk away from it for for 15, 20 minutes... You're going to come back and find something that's theologically, eh. this has to be tended. Are you tracking with me? Are you making the connection between soup and spirituality? If you and I are going to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, it's going to be because we tend our relationship with God. It's because we are giving attention to our spiritual side so that it stays on fire. Friends, perseverance just doesn't happen. It happens when we give the proper attention to our connection to God. And by the way, here it comes. How do you give attention to your relationship with God. Means of grace. Worship. Prayer. Studying of Scripture. Being together as the people of God. Being generous. A willingness to serve the needs of others so that others can come to know Jesus. Attendance to the means of grace, the core values that make us who we are, the things that are on the banners in the back of this room, those are the things that aren't just how we do life at Christ Church. They are the processes that help you stir your spirit and allow it to stay boiling and bubbling. And when it's boiling and bubbling, guess what? You you persevere in the relationships of your life. You have a strength beyond yourself to stay at it, no matter how hard it might be. So let me wrap it up with this image. How many of you think you're going to have a hot beverage sometime this next week? How many of you probably are going to have a hot beverage in the next, oh, say 15 minutes? (laughs) Okay, all right. How many of you think that somewhere this week you're going to have a cool beverage? Yeah? You think? All right, so I think that probably pretty well covers all of us, right? That that pretty well covers all of us. Unless we have some lukewarm water drinkers in here, okay, which we might. But somewhere along the line, you're probably going to have a beverage that's hot or cold or somewhere in between. Can I challenge you to do something this week? 
Every time you have a hot beverage or a cold beverage or something in between, let the temperature of that beverage trigger you to think about the temperature of your connection to God. I've had four, four cups of coffee already today. I'll probably have a couple more. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Grab a hold of that mug. Grab a hold of that glass with the ice in it. And when you feel it, let it be a trigger to get you thinking about the temperature of your God connection. Is it hot? Is it lukewarm? Is it cold and needs to be restarted again? Because, friends, here's the truth. Relationships work when they persevere. And to persevere in relationships means to not give up or give in. And the ability to do that is tied to a connection to God that's boiling and bubbling. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your word today. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for the wonder of your grace in our lives. Whatever you need to do in our relationship with you, God, wherever we happen to be in our relationship with you, Lord, do what you need to do to stir it up so that the resources we need to persevere in the relationships that you've put us in can be found not in ourselves, but always in you and in your strength. This is our prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. Now, friends, as we spend some time singing and praying, the altar is open to any of you that would like to come and pray about anything, maybe about some relationships that you're struggling in or anything at all, maybe the world that we are, uh, live in today. The altar is open for you to pray. If you'd like to share a particular joy or concern, the yellow slips you can use, they are in the pew racks. You can jot down whatever you're celebrating. Are you celebrating God as a good God in your life today? Are you? Are you awake? Yeah, okay. If there's something specific you need God to do in your life, you can jot that down too, and then bring them forward to me, and then together we will lift them to the Lord in prayer. So as Sam comes, I invite you to stand. Let's sing together, and let's pray together this day. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining. Every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand My faith on heaven on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's yards on our hurl. I'm tall, the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven. You may be seated. God, how thankful we are now for these moments to pray.
Thank you that in a world of such chaos and noise sometimes, moments to simply pause and be quiet and ask your spirit to tune our hearts to your heart. Moments like this are welcome. Moments like this are critical to a spirit that's on fire for you. So God, in these moments together, our prayer is that you will take our lives to that higher place. That wherever we might happen to be in our connection to you this morning, you would take us to a deeper place and a higher place. That your spirit would work within us in such a way to stir up our connection to you. If we have been hit or miss in prayer, draw us back into your embrace. If we read the Bible here and there, call us into your word with consistency. If our time with your people, either in fellowship or worship, has been sometimes there and sometimes not, draw us more into a consistent connection to you. Not because, God, we feel guilty, not because anybody's making us, but because all of those things are critical to a relationship with you that's boiling and bubbling and becomes the source of our strength to persevere in the challenging moments of our lives. So, holy God, these requests that I hold in my hands, my sisters and brothers, join me now as we lay them at your feet. There is not one of them that you are inattentive to or unaware of. And so we ask, God, that you will stretch out your hand and be at work in every one of these lives and circumstances and situations in ways that make it evident that you're present there so that the people in these challenging places can lift their voices in praise and adoration and worship of you. Thank you, God, for yet another stack of pink slips that's set on this altar from the prayer box at the mall. A completely different set from the ones we prayed for last Sunday. Yet another group of people are saying, Christ Church, pray for me. And so, Father, we pray for these. Whatever their need might be, whatever their challenge might be, wherever they are celebrating the goodness of God in their life, we join them in prayer today. And we ask that every place and every person might know the touch of your hand. Now, God, we leave this place to re-engage the world that belongs to you. Even though it's chaotic and challenging, even though directions seem to be running away from you instead of toward you, you send us into the world to be the witnesses of grace and truth and hope and patience and prayer. So help us to be those people, no matter where we go, or who we encounter this week, God, so that through the way we live, others might see you alive in us. We pray in the name of the one who still teaches his church to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As David mentioned a few moments ago, one of the ways that we stir up our fervor with our relationship with God is through our generosity. So with our tithes and our gifts, may our offering time be a practice of the means of grace. As Michelle Scholl comes to share with us in song, we will worship with those gifts.
We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. We pray for family protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And God, while you hear each spoken need, your love is worth too much. Make less of this. Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes? through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise we pray your voice to hear we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near we doubt your goodness we doubt your love as if every promise from your word is not enough and all And long that we'd have faith to believe. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? And what if trials of this life? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know the pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. It's not. blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near what if our greatest disappointment of the aching of this life is a Let's stand. Thank you, Michelle. Let's praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God, we offer this prayer of thanks. 
Lord, we're thankful today that your blessings show up in ways that uh, we don't always predict. We're thankful, Lord, that through the trials, through tears, through the soft rain and through the storms, you reveal yourself and you give us strength. We thank you, God, that in all the difficulties of life, as we persevere, we do not do that alone. So we're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for your faith. We're thankful for your strength. Accept our gifts today, O God, as our gratitude to you as we honor you with these gifts. We pray, God, for your grace to grow more and more in us and through us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing. May God bind us together with his love. Bless be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. And together we pray. Holy One, we leave this place with joy-filled hope as you have made us to be in relationship with one another. Help us to live each day more devoted to each other and stronger in our perseverance so that together we can be Christ to the world. Amen. Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Why? Because God is good. No. I'm not letting you get away with it. Because God is good. All the time. All the time. Go in peace. Amen.